Hello, everyone. I'm Han Zhang, Asia Pacific uh, Sasumi Director, Packaging and Specialty Plastics at Valve. On this episode of Loopin, we will be discussing how big tech is creating scalable solutions for the plastic waste problem in India, where 10,000 tons of waste goes uncollected every day. To stop the waste, we need to rethink plastics not as waste, but as materials that are too valuable to be lost in the environment. With me today is Abhay Dishpande, founder of Recycle, who is bringing the digital revolution to waste management and recycling. This is a looped in, a conversation about unlocking the power of the circular economy. But to start, can you tell us about yourself, what the Recycle does, and how you came up with the idea for it? Thanks, Anne, uh, for inviting me for this show. Uh, I think I'm a serial, just a few background about myself. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I have, this is my third venture. I have done two before in a digital space. I have earlier worked in e-commerce and I worked in a retail space for a couple of years. After exiting my last venture in 2015, uh, we were looking for the next big thing and next big problem to be solved. And somewhere we felt that waste management looks like a much bigger problem to solve, which has an impact on everyone's life, whether it's an individual, whether it is a business, everyone has a little bit on life. So we started working on it. And as we did more research on it, we realized that India is one of the largest waste generator. And by 2030, I think India will be the largest waste generator in terms of plastic or any other waste. At the same time, India has a unique uh, way of looking at waste. There is nothing called waste in this country. So everything is a raw material. There is, there is the people look at it as a value. They don't really look at it as a waste. So looking at the Indian context, we wanted to build a business model and uh, do something in that space where we can disrupt it using the digital technologies. And now we know solving the plastic waste problem can happen without an investment, innovative solutions, and rethink the traditional business model. That's why we were proud to collaborate with you on Rethink Plus, a digital platform that encourages consumers and the business to capture value in plastic waste. So when we first met in India, you described your idea. I didn't tell you at that time. My first reaction was that you were trying to do something like a, what Amazon and Uber did in the retail and the transportation sectors. Do you think that you are doing something disruptive? And how does a recycle reinvent the waste management? Yeah, and actually, you're absolutely right. What you said that we are doing what what Uber and Amazon has done in different spaces. So we are actually trying to build up uh, our digital approach and digital platform is connecting the brand owners, generators, processors, and recyclers at one place. And by doing that, we are able to really bring that traceability and more value to each stakeholders across the ecosystem. Like for example, the uh, producer brands wanted to fulfill their EPR obligation. They are using our technology to fulfill it real time using using our platforms. Same way uh, a bulk generator or aggregator can create a pickup request on our platform, which then can be picked up through our uh, network of our partners and they get paid for that material through their digital technologies. So I think by connecting all these stakeholders, uh, we are basically creating the Uber or uh, Amazon of trash uh, for India. So would it be fair to say that the Recycle is a platform company? You don't own the waste truck, landfill, nor recycling factory. It's a very complicated thing, right? Yeah, so Han, uh, you are absolutely right. We are a asset light model where we really don't own any of the assets. And what we are trying to do is connect the stakeholders who are actually doing the work already in the ecosystem. So by doing that, uh, we are able to really connect the people who are generating the waste or who are uh, processing the waste, the recyclers directly and remove the unnecessary stakeholders to pass on the extra benefits to them from both the sides. That's the one benefit which you bring on the table. At the same time, we bring more transparency and traceability for each stakeholder. So they don't have to really depend on that. The third thing, the third thing basically is the quality of the material because the material is processed in our ecosystem ethically and it is has a more complete traceability that brings extra benefits for the, all the stakeholders. In terms of challenges, multiple challenges because the first challenge is the quality of the material. This is something because it's a waste; it is processed at multiple places, multiple people do the job. So, really getting the consistent quality is a challenge. So, we actually brought in some technology solutions into that, digital as well as uh, physical so, uh, solutions into that to get the best quality material available. 
Second challenge which we faced uh, uh, is the uh, this com- this industry is completely informal industry, and the people there are like uh, bottom of the pyramid. So many times making them adopt technology is a challenge, and that initially we faced that challenge a lot. But now thankfully we are able to solve that problem to some extent because we are able to provide them much better uh, value to their material. So naturally that they are getting driven by that. So I think these are the challenges and uh, the benefits which we brought into the ecosystem in last couple of years. So we absolutely need to fill an ecosystem of innovation, incentivize uh, the marketplace to find the solutions, and open consumer minds uh, to what's possible. Up here, there are quite a few companies trying to do similar things of digitizing waste management. But I have to say that Recycle is one of the most successful companies in this space. So what, what's your secret? Can you tell us about the success you are seeing and the impact you are making? Uh, so there's no secret as such, Han. Uh, what we have done is we have spent the first two years of our journey in understanding each ecosystem player. We were because we work with the Kabadi Walas, we work with the recyclers, really deeply work with them, understand, understood their problems, understood their uh, challenges, and then created a solution solution for them. And I think that is one of the reasons our solution is getting more adoption across the ecosystem. In terms of the impact and in terms of the trans- tra- traction which we have got, uh, we are almost working with a thousand plus uh, uh, bulk generators. We are working with half a million consumers already. We are working with hundred plus recyclers. We are working with uh, 500 plus aggregators and we are able to uh, uh, channelize almost 10,000 plus metric tons every month already. So last year we have done 75 to 85,000 metric tons already been channelized through our ecosystem and we're looking at 300,000 plus metric tons for this financial year, which just started. So we're looking at the scale uh, growing every year four or five x in terms of the impact which we are creating on the waste space and our vision is to channelize two million metric tons of the plastic uh, by 2025 which will effectively will be eight to ten percent of the plastic generated in into into indian market recycle recently received the investment from a circular capital's ocean fund the world's first investment fund dedicated to address asia's plastic crisis so would you tell us what this means to you and how are you going to use the farm? I think circulate investment definitely means a lot for us because they are the only fund which is focusing on st- uh, solving the plastic problem across the Southeast Asia region. And they believing on us uh, is something gives us some more confidence. So as far as the money, as I said, we are just channelizing 10,000 metric tons now and we're aiming to go to 2 million metric tons by 2025. So we'll need a lot of money in building that awareness, building that, uh, building more stakeholders on the ecosystem, create that digital footprint. And that money will be used for all these purposes to to make the world uh, and the company also grow to uh, another four, five X and, uh, and then achieve the goals which we have kept for ourselves. The Recycle team has created a scalable solution that has already achieved so much. Can you share what you see happening next with the sustainable solutions and what's bringing you hope for a more sustainable future? I think Han, this is just a beginning. I think uh, what we have started seeing and uh, COVID has really made people aware about the sustainability. Most of the corporates, consumers are really acting on it now. And I'm really hopeful that the uh, year, the world after 10 years will be completely different. And all the digital footprint which we are creating and other people will create globally, we'll learn from each other and we'll have a more sustainable and uh, more circular world in uh, coming year. Innovative recycling solutions, like the work Recycle is doing in India, takes imagination and a long-term vision. With this mindset, companies can be empowered to design products for circularity and provide a new life for used plastics. Thank you very much, Abhe, for joining us today. It's a great business case on how technology can make recycling work, and I'm glad we had the opportunity to discuss it. So we look forward to Recycle's sure. continuing the progress. Thanks, Anne, for inviting me for this program. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for watching. If you enjoy Looplin, you should check out our other episodes, sure. including conversations with Centauri, Seal the Air, and many others. You can find them at dow.com slash Thanks again for joining us. <laughs>